appreciate it. Well, guys, we uh, welcome back to Chasing Hardware. We're at the Susquehanna River. We just drove four hours down. It is uh, three in the morning. We literally cranked out a podcast for Serious Angler and drove straight down here just so we can get on the water. And about time for the lines in uh, and practice for the lines in period. So we got about an hour and a half that we can at least nap here in the truck. But uh, Chasing Hardware is back. And in typical fashion, I'm choosing Team No Sleep. I don't even know how I'm filming this right now, but I will see you guys in two hours. Three, two. All right, I don't know if you guys can see it, but we got the Outback all rigged up. Getting ready to rock. Let me put my keys away here. And then got a bunch of Plano boxes. Basically, it's whole Plano Edge, Plano Line, Plano Keepo, my Trucko Safeo. At least my truck keys safe. So yeah, kayaks all rigged up. We got our Arctic cooler. Which I'll show you guys. I'll show you guys everything set up once it actually gets light out. There's no point in me showing you when it's dark, so we're just gonna get out, get comfortable a little bit out while it's pitch dark out. We got 15 minutes till the technical line is in time. Just want you always want to try to practice tournament hours so that you can kind of get an idea of what to expect. So that's what we're trying to do. Running on no sleep. We'll see you guys when it gets light out. All right, guys, it is finally getting light out here. Probably put our headlamp away for now. Caught one fish. Didn't really, I had nothing going camera wise. I was sitting there talking to uh, Forrest on the phone on his way to work and got to tease a little bit. They were fishing the river and caught one just throwing the chop out here at a, a shallow eddy. We're actually where we had uh, gone last year, or sorry, not last year, two years ago and uh, cast a check on this, uh, this river on the Hobie event. Um, this one is the Bassmaster kayak event on the Susquehanna River. We got in this morning pretty dang early. We literally drove overnight to get here. I napped for maybe 30-ish minutes. That is a big freaking crawdad that's floating down river right now. Interesting to see. But we're out here practicing for two days. You guys are uh, on the practice video. And then of course we will get into the next video. Coming videos will be tournament days. We're staying with our, uh, our buddies Jose and Pat from the NYKBF crew. Who we fish uh, against most of the year. They came down from New York to fish this deal. And so basically what we're gonna do is just run a lot of water uh, because the river actually is up right now. Uh, and it's gonna keep going up. And I think it's supposed to stop and level out by tomorrow night. Uh, we'll obviously monitor as we go, but to be quite honest, I think what that's gonna do is the water was low uh, earlier this week. And so all this fish are gonna be pulled into these certain sections. But then now that the water is rising, it's just going to allow those fish to roam. So now you're going to have a lot more surface area to cover uh, that you can go and catch fish on. So I think that's going to be part of our plan is pretty much just cover water. Just pick up moving bait and go. You know, if we have to slow down and pick apart some eddies, we can. But when you're fishing a system like this, last thing you want to do is pick up an old freaking Ned rig. You want to pick up a chopo, a spinner bait, things like that and go to work. But uh, I'm excited that Chasing Hardware is back and we're on one of my favorite places that I don't get to fish very often, if ever. So we're gonna take advantage, have some fun. Oh, God. perfect timing. <laughs> That's a good one too. That's a good one. Yeah. <clears throat> that water is chilly. That's a pretty good one. Come here, pal. Please don't do that to me. There we go. Thank you, bud. Just relax for a little bit. Please and thank you. That is the one thing about this river uh, that I kind of regret not bringing my net for just the pure fact that these things are literally on cocaine. Oh, wow, look at that. And if a bird or a ski got to him. But, uh, that's one wild looking fish. It's probably like a 17 or so. Thank you, pal. Right on cue. All right, we'll give you guys the old aerial view so we can try to not miss any topwater bites today. That is the plan. 
see if he had any buddies. So last time I was here, all these grass patches were all under or er, above water pretty good. Ooh, bait's jumping out there actually. Looks like it's getting chased. I wasn't able to fish stuff like this, so it was just super, super shallow. And I'm sure they could have been there, but gosh, that's fun. Right on cue. <laughs> How can you not love this? <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Throw it for me, would you? Oh, well, they definitely like the chopo. Gosh dang, these hooks are good. Homeboy is tubby. Thanks, bud. That was fun. Not the, uh, not a, I thought it was a good one for a second. I'm watching him swim away, actually. I don't know, unless that's a different one. I mean, that's, if anything, that might be, tournament-wise, we're gonna want as our smallest. That's not a, not a great fish. Fun fish, though. Fun freaking fish. Decent one. Probably another maybe 17. So every time I pick up the chopo, imagine I come to fish with two chopo rods. All right, so set up. We are throwing the Berkeley Chapo and Maverick. Easily my favorite plop style bait. Uh, and I got a Shimano Corrado DC 150, 30 pound braid. 
and then a seven foot medium fast Abu Garcia winch. It's a composite rod. It's a little bit more on the stiff side. So far, it's locked all these fish in. I don't know if you guys saw that. Hopefully the camera picked that up. That was a musky waking it. Oh, oh, oh. I just witnessed something actually pretty cool. Uh, I just saw a smallmouth, a big one, like a 20 plus, swimming with carp. There's definitely been a lot of theories on that. And that just confirmed it. Like it literally was making the same motions and swimming with the carp. And then got away from, or saw my kayak and got spooked. That one was big, I confirmed that one. I wasn't gonna cast at it. That was freaking cool. If you're a nerd like me, that'll, that'll geek you out. Now uh, this is, Peaceful. Absolutely peaceful. So I brought my old Arctic Zone Titan Soft Cooler here. Some snacks out. Get a protein bar. We'll save the cantaloupe for later. I'll put a discount code below if you guys want to save some money on Arctic coolers. Our zone is pretty legit. That light up one I had this morning is, I think it's a deal. almost really bad. I got the smallmouth hook so good. I got kayaks behind me. Not a bad one. Thanks, bud. Got two kayaks all behind me now. Coming down that little chute that I was gonna go in. This tournament does have 200 plus people in it, so it's kind of a little, little crazy. It's still gonna take a lot, I think, to to win this thing but it's gonna suck trying to be not around people the whole time all good though
These are the kind of things that uh, I think I could be looking for. These points right here that come in. It's got dirtier water coming in, meeting with cleaner water. Could have fish stacked on it. Potentially. Decent little fella. It's nothing crazy. Felt big at the beginning, but I think it's literally just because we've been catching dinks. Like that's one we we're not even gonna we're gonna want to come turn my day. He ate it as soon as it hit the water. On the right on this mud line where these three little creeks intersect. Ooh, it's got bit again. This thing looks a little bit too muddy, but we're gonna give it a shot. I definitely do not blame anybody for bringing a motor to this event. Kind of wish I was in the pro angler with the, uh, the the new port, but hey, we're getting our steps in. We are burning calories, baby. We're actually making our way back. We're gonna check one or two more things, and honestly, probably gonna leave and go check out a different spot. this spot that's a dang good one chill out homie I mean that's not it's still not a great one but it's the kind we might need it's probably a 17 or so thank you bud appreciate it I put the uh, black chopper away picked up the Bone Chapo 75. I think it's actually the exact one that we were throwing a couple years ago when we were here. Uh, this was the spot almost to the dot that I lost some of those big smallies on. See if we can't get one more bite around this general area and then a good note for me anyway. And it honestly guys, that bite was the exact freaking same as it was two years ago on those bigger fish. Now, that fish I just caught was not the same caliber of fish, but uh, it, it ate the same exact way. As soon as it hit the water, two or three reel turns and it blows up on it. That was exactly how those other fish would do it. Now these fish eating it like that, two or three reel turns after it hits the water tells me that that's, it's a surprise and it's a reaction strike. So it might just, it might just have to be happenstance of getting it near them you know, landing on top of them almost. So I'm sure I'm gonna have some susky people on here that are watching this video. 
I think these are smallmouth that are jumping all over the place. So I'm assuming after the dragonflies or these bugs, I'm assuming they're smallmouth. So I don't think there's trout in here, correct? I don't know, I'll have to do some research tonight, but they're not like, they're not big or anything by any means, but I mean, I want to catch them. Are they smallmouth? I mean, you guys tell me down below. There are people who know way more than I do. So they won't eat anything. I'm going to have to throw this bug here in a second to see if it works. Oh, that's cool. Freaking bald eagle. And there's another one. Alright guys, we're back at the house. Just checked in. Nice views of this place. We got the outback. We got uh, Jose and Pat coming. I'm just getting some things. Charging. I went and grabbed a couple things food-wise. Some Aldi's. Filled the cooler up with some more ice <clears throat> to make sure we're ready to rock for the coming days because it's going to get hot. Hot, hot, hot. Uh, doing a little, a little easy on dinner tonight. Literally just doing half a pizza, carb loading a little bit, if you will, because I had no energy. I was running out of energy pretty quick there, obviously, because I had no sleep too, so that doesn't help. But uh, this is pretty much the place. We got the, the main room, great view. We got bedroom one, bathroom, bedroom two. So nothing crazy. Sounds like people are freaking smashing them out here, which we're catching up. We caught a bunch of fish today, uh, hitting some old, like the history. Uh, but we did not catch any big ones. That's the problem. People are catching freaking big ones and multiple of them. So we're gonna do. A, we're gonna get the, some map research done and try to get to bed at a good time tonight. Get some new uh, things tied on and ready for tomorrow. Uh, I think we're just gonna stay in that lane of throwing the chopo, throwing some bigger top waters, put on a big spinner bait. Kind of go from there, guys. I don't. I'm not really sure where else to approach. I think it's just gonna, it's an area thing right now. I'm sure people are throwing some bigger baits like glides and things like that. I just don't want to. With my track record, I'm not gonna dip into that. At least with smallies here on that river system. So. It was hot today. Uh, I am freaking exhausted. I came uh, back here actually. Uh, I may have said I just checked in, but actually checked in, took a two and a half, three hour nap, which was much needed. I am still exhausted. So we're gonna try to get to bed early tonight. Uh, we're here, this place is awesome. Last day of practice tomorrow, and then it becomes tournament day. We're gonna try to hit two different areas tomorrow. Uh, that's the goal. Try to cover some ground, see what we can figure out. Come along, stay tuned, see what we can do. We'll see you guys in the morning. guys good morning it is day two and the final day of practice we're actually launching with our buddy mr steven sisto hitting up a new spot that i have not tried here yet on the susky gonna go explore see if we can't run into uh, some bigger bites learn a little bit about the river sisto's pretty good out here I'm gonna try to uh learn a little bit how these these river smallmouth behave the things that do the things that can make them tick a little bit we're not trying to get info on spots or anything per se but i am all ears to uh learning how these susquehanna river smallmouth behave and how you can differentiate yourself amongst your competitors to catch a larger caliber fish so we're gonna do some exploring today got until four o'clock we gotta be off to head to registration we'll get back with the guys figure out some dinner plans for later but for now we got a decent amount of today to Try to figure out what the heck we're gonna do tomorrow for day one of the Bassmaster Kayak Series on the Susquehanna River. We're gonna try and figure that out. Absolutely beautiful morning though, I gotta say. Hey, it looked good. But dude, that's what I'm saying, like in the middle of nothing. Trying to shake him. I don't want to deal with treble hooks without a net. 
Huh? Probably like an 18. Maybe. Nah, not even close. I eyeballed him. Maybe like a 17. <laughs> Definitely big item. It's like a 16. <laughs> yeah. Honestly guys, if you can get me out here every day just exploring places like this, when I go up to the Adirondacks as well, this and like places like that, I could I could forget about turning and fishing. Like I would stop in a heartbeat if I could do this every single day. Just go explore, learn new things about these bass. That would be freaking awesome. These places are so untapped still. So much fun, man. It's, I could do it. It's just, it's peaceful. It's relaxing. Thrill of adventure. It sounds so cliche, but I absolutely love it. <laughs> that was sick. <laughs> they were just going nuts over here on bait. Yeah. I threw the chapel over and they just like blew it out of the water three times in a row. <laughs> no, like right off this point right here of that one. Yeah, they're short striking a lot. That's the kind of shit right there. I'd rather just throw a swim jig and crack their ass on braid. Was that a blow up in there? <laughs> that was sick. Do places like this or the Adirondacks or like Minnesota, I would trade, I would never turn a fish again if it meant I could just go do that every day and explore a new lake. Jesus Christmas. Yeah, right over here. Sucker's fat as hell. Yeah. Does that look like a little bridge creek deal that's floating in there? Yeah. By that sign? You wanna go over yeah, let's go check it out. Oh, that's a big spider. That's a big spider. Big spider? Oh, that's a big spider. Yeah, I didn't look down. That's your fault. Yeah. <laughs> Bad move. What? I got a whole tree down. <laughs> like a whole tree. I'm going to gauge it out. I want to see if there's anything we can do. Well, that's pretty sick back there. Yeah, I don't know if we're getting around that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Makes things quieter. Sounds Gucci. You know, it doesn't matter to me. Um, just grab the back end and I'll go through. That way I'll walk through and just make sure that the back end doesn't slide down river. <laughs> you should be able to just push it up there. Yeah. If I could just tie it off to that. What's that? You probably could just tie it off. It's all the, the cooler and the camera gear. Fix my seat. Want to snap the back? Wait a second. I'm gonna go for a walk. 
Spinning rods gone. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Where was it laying? In the back? Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna probably be able to find it, I hope. I don't, I don't think it can go too far. I think if you mean that tree? Yeah. It's funny is I had the GoPro going too, so it probably caught me losing that damn thing. The nice part, it's got a Revo rocket spinning reel, so it's nice and bright red. I shouldn't need help. I should be able to find it pretty easy. Oh, I see it. We're good. I found it. I found it. Can you imagine coming back here and just find a spinning rod and a... <laughs> the amount of gear that I have broken or lost this year is an all-time high. I broke three rods in the past probably month. All right, guys, we're back at the house. We uh, literally came back, dumped our stuff, had a quick bite to eat, and crashed. <laughs> Took like a nice three hour nap, because uh, we got off the water at like, I don't know, right around noonish. Uh, and I slept till probably right around almost four, once I got back to the house, around one-ish. So it was much needed. I feel a lot more mentally refreshed, especially after not having a good sleep week. I've actually been using this uh, new whoop bracelet. It's supposed to be like a health band and it like tracks all that stuff and it's been yelling at me that I've been <laughs> I'm not behaving this week, I guess. Sleep wise, and it's just, uh, it was good to get that done. We went to registration right afterwards, just 10 minutes down the road, which was super easy. Got everything checked, ready to go. And we are back at the house waiting for the guys to pull up. Uh, they went to go grab a bite to eat and I am getting everything all rigged up here. Uh, and it's honestly gonna be a pretty straightforward day. Chapo, buzz bait. Uh, I'm gonna have one like Texas rig flipping bait just for some of that grass stuff that we found. Chatter bait and then a wacky rig. Just gonna keep it straightforward and hope that's all we need going into tomorrow. Which we're just gonna try to keep it simple. Just run as much water as we can. They're for things that we found today. They look they look great. They think they make sense. You know, I, I know how to run like I know how to read current. I know how to read moving water. I understand the basics of river fishing, but uh, seriously, got to give a shout out to my buddy Steve uh, Sistos. Got me on the water and, and kind of just showed me some like things that, not in regards to like spots, but in regards to how to understand how the river works and how these fish maneuver the river. The, some of the simple things that, like getting your kayak right up against the edge of the grass, even though it's fast moving water and you can stay put. Things like that that, you know, would have taken me a long time to understand. And um, him being kind of a, a river rat, if you will, showed me a bunch of those nuggets and taught me a lot today. I really learned a lot. And that's, you know, that you guys know me, if you know Chasing Hardware, that's the number one goal in these things is to learn. And so huge shout out to my buddy, Steve. Um, it was much, much appreciated and definitely owe him one back and teaching him some stuff up north. I'm looking forward to tomorrow, guys. I'm hoping it's gonna be a fun day. Not sure if this practice video turned out to uh, anything to fruition, but nonetheless, it was fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And the next video will be day one, the next Chasing Hardware video on the Susquehanna River for the next Bassmaster event. Be our last Bassmaster event until the championship coming up in March. So we have a little ways away, waiting on uh, that lake to be announced so we can start doing our study and things like that and our prep for that. That's probably taken on as the biggest kayak fishing championship right now. But either way, tomorrow, I'm really looking forward to getting out on the water, which for you guys will be the next video. If you enjoyed this one, like, subscribe, and we'll see y'all on the next one.